DC Rivals Hypercoaster is the tallest and fastest roller coaster in the Southern Hemisphere. It's located at Warner Brothers Movie World on the Gold Coast of Australia. And it's only one of three mock hypercoasters currently in existence. It'll be one of four once Project Exodus opens at Thorpe Park, but also the only other two out there feature inversions. There's one in Turkey and one in China. The ride opened in 2017 is themed to all the different villains of the DC comics. You have that iconic Joker just at the crest of the lift hill, and you got some pretty impressive stats here. It's just over 200 feet tall, just over 70 miles per hour, and 4,593 feet of track. It is a long ride, and there are so many elements packed into this thing. This is going to be my full in-depth look at the attraction. During my most recent and only visit to Warner Brothers Movie World, I was able to ride DC Rivals, I think, eight times, three of which were backwards. So I definitely got a good feel for the attraction. We're going to walk through the different elements, and then I'm also going to talk about what it's like to experience this thing in reverse, because it is crazy. But of course, before we do all that, first impressions. When you're driving up to Warner Brothers, this is like the ride you see. It sprawls across the skyline. And because Movie World is also right up against the highway, you also can't miss this attraction if you're driving by. That includes if you're also heading to Dream World. Because both of these parks are right off of the same road, if you're coming from like Surfer's Paradise, you're literally gonna drive right by DC Rivals to get to Dream World, which I just think is hilarious. The first time I saw this thing, I was like, oh my gosh, like there it is. You know, this is one of those rides that I feel like is just so highly sought after. There's something like mystifying about it because the ride is so huge, yet it's in a location that so many of us will never get to. You know, Australia is a far ways away for a lot of us. I think it was pretty safe to say that this was like the big roller coaster that made us want to go to Australia especially since you can't really ride something else like this anywhere else. Project Exodus will be the closest thing that you can get to this. So that's why I'm going to try and describe this experience for you and compare it to some other rides that maybe some of you guys are familiar with. When you enter Warner Brothers, you're going to hang a left, walk straight down this midway past Green Lantern and Justice League. DC Rivals has its own little plaza right here. You have this big wall art with the heroes and villains going at it. This queue isn't anything really special. It almost reminds me of how like a Six Flags park would theme a big roller coaster. You know, just some like big billboards up with some characters, some information about them, that sort of thing. When you get to your station, you're going to choose your row. As I mentioned earlier, there is a backwards facing seat. That is an upcharge. You can't just walk up and do it. Otherwise, the line would be crazy. I know some people are saying like, oh man, you should do your first ride backwards. That'd be such a crazy way to experience the coaster, which it would. And I don't fault anyone who wants to do that. But understand first that this ride is by far its craziest when you're riding backwards. So that therefore means that when you experience it forward, you probably won't like it as much. So we decided to ride it forwards first a couple times before doing it backwards so that we had something to work up to. Now, when you roll out of the station, you're going to take a right-hand turn. You start up your lift hill. And I mean, this thing's pretty imposing. You know, there's nothing else like this anywhere around, especially when you factor in that you have a pretty insane first drop ahead of you. An exact angle of descent is not on RCDB. I mean, when you look at this thing, I mean, we got to be talking like at least an 80 degree descent. And it twists you to the side. Think about like Expedition G-Force or Conda. Those rides do that. And this thing whips you so hard. This twist is crazy. And when you're riding in reverse, you don't see it coming. Towards the back of the train, you just get yanked down this drop. It's not my favorite part of DC Rivals. However, it is absolutely one of the standout moments. And this thing throws just such a unique layout at you. Next up is a huge Camelback Hill. You get some crazy ejector airtime at the top. And as you're coming out of that hill, you actually twist a little bit to the left. And that's so that you can enter your non-inverting loop. This is by far the wildest moment on the ride. This thing is nuts, specifically the exit of this element. So you're rising up towards the sky, you start twisting to the left, and just as you're reaching the peak, you're then immediately yanked back down to the ground. The first time I rode this thing, it caught me off guard so hard. There's just no other comparison to how this feels. Like I think about the ones on like Rip Ride Rocket or the Sky Rocket 2s, those things are gradual compared to this. Following that, you rise up into a stangle dive. The peak of this element is great the way you just bank to the right. However, I wish that the exit of this maneuver was just as swift as the entry. Like, you get thrown into this thing so quickly, and then it's almost like a ramp coming out of it. I wish it whipped you like the way that some of the Intamin Stangle Dives do. Don't get me wrong, still a fun moment, but when you have a ride of this caliber and we're comparing it to, you know, some of the world's greatest roller coasters, you can definitely point to a couple others that do that moment better. 
At this point, you reach the far end of the coaster, rising up into another element, and then you get thrown downwards to the left. If it were any steeper, it'd be a dive loop. However, DC Rivals does not go upside down. You're banking real low to the ground, you get yanked to the right, and then back to the left. And it's this fast paced change of direction that you get for pretty much the rest of the ride from here on out. DC Rivals is all back and forth. And I really like it in this section. However, I think towards the end, it gets a little repetitive. I'll get to that in a bit though. As you're flying under the Stango Dive here, you then twist to the right, and then you enter DC Rivals' Helix. And this part for me is just a huge miss. Like the pacing is so good up until that moment. And then as you go around this Helix, you're like, yeah, okay, yeah, all right, that's cool. And then as soon as you come out of it, it's back to like throwing you around real low to the ground into a great finale. It's this one middle section of the ride that I just wish wasn't there. Like this is already a really long experience. If they took out this Helix, the length would not be affected. It would absolutely improve the pacing of this ride. Like it's taking something these maneuvers like kind of slow and before you say well it probably sped up later in the day yes the whole attraction collectively as a whole sped up when we rode it later that afternoon however the speed that you go through this helix is still nowhere near what it should be when you compare it to the rest of the ride and sometimes that's harder to convey in pov videos but once you're actually sitting on the train it's like something that you noticeably feel honestly move it to the end of the ride there's a reason that so many roller coasters put the helix as the last thing you do if you put those after those airtime hills i think it will work just fine once you come out of it though you have another rapid twist to the left and then we go into a series of bunny hills and all of these just give great ejector airtime these final bunny hops are awesome it's the best moment of airtime on the ride excluding the drop and you twist under lift, do a banked ejector hill, and then you rise into the break run. And that is DC Rivals. I like this layout because it's a little bit of everything, but personally, I would have done things I think slightly different. Like, okay, I was just talking about that helix there. Some of these back and forth twists, I would have redone. Because like, they're fine on their own. None of them are bad by any means, but I also wouldn't say they're particularly amazing either. I'm fine with repetition if it's done really well, like B&M Camelback Hills or RMC Ejector Airtime Hills, great. That's why I really like those sequential hills at the end. But the problem here is each of these twists feel like too much of the same thing when that thing isn't a wow moment. Like if each of them whipped you as hard as the drop or the non-inverting loop, then I think it'd be a different story. I think about Maverick or I-305. When it goes through those crazy twists, I live for those moments because of how well done they are. It feels like DC Rivals is trying to do that, but doesn't quite get there. Some of those lower sections kind of remind me of the twist that Copperhead Strike does. It's definitely a similar sensation if you've experienced that ride. It's even the same train setup because it's mock. But understand that me talking about all this is not me saying that this layout doesn't work. Because it does. It's a super fun and enjoyable roller coaster. But these differences probably would have taken it from being a really good ride to like a top five roller coaster. Which I would say DC Rivals does not quite get there. I still prefer Maverick. I still prefer I-305. The thing that makes DC Rivals stand out on its own is the backwards seat. This is something else. It's an absolutely wild sensation. It's kind of scary, I'm not gonna lie. Going up that lift till backwards and you realize how huge this thing is, really starts getting your blood flowing, and then just going through these different elements at this speed, having no idea where you're going next. It's a lot to process, but it is really, really good. It's the best seat on the coaster, it just is. And I think that's why this backwards seat has become kind of legendary. It literally got me thinking about like what other roller coasters could put a backwards seat on their train that would just elevate that experience. And frankly, that's a topic for another time. But when you think about it, like a ride of this scale, it's kind of insane that they decided to put a backwards facing seat on it to begin with. So if you go to Warner Brothers Movie World, pay the extra money to ride DC Rivals in the backwards facing seat. No question about it. So for DC Rivals' final score, I'm giving it an 8.5 out of 10. I put it around the same level as maybe like Conda at Walby, Belgium. I mentioned the things that I would have changed that I think would have improved this ride experience. And understand that that score is not based off of the backwards experience. That's based off of the other 22 seats on the roller coaster. If I was rating the backwards experience, I mean, it'd be like an 11 out of 10. It's just like unbelievable. But the thing is, that's obviously a very special case. You can't really judge the entire roller coaster just based off of that one seat. But if you get the chance, I obviously highly recommend going out to ride DC Rivals at Warner Brothers Movie World. Let me know down in the comments below if this ride's on your bucket list, if you've had the opportunity to experience it. Do you agree with the things that I brought up? Please let me know. And of course, stay tuned for more roller coaster reviews here at Coaster Studios. And I'll see you next time.